Welcome to this session of Senera Therapy. My name is Altaz and it's been quite a while since I last made a video. Um, but today was an occasion uh, that I had to make a video for. Um, if any of you have been watching, I, my good friend online and both offline, SJS Arts, and I uh, started a series of uh, podcast discussions and the idea really was is that SJS would recommend to me two films and then I would watch those films and then we would uh, we would discuss those films and the first session went so well that we quickly decided to essentially do that every to record that every second week and we've pretty much stuck to the course with that except for for the most recent one, there was a three week gap, but we just did the most recent one uh, where we discuss uh, Jacques Rivette's The Nun and also La Notte Bianchi, which is uh, Visconti's uh, film. So definitely check that out if you're interested. And what I'll do is I will link uh, the playlist below uh, that's on SJS's channel that's going to run through the podcast and look out for the next one because uh, we'll be shooting number five, not this Saturday, but next Saturday. And it's usually uploaded quite quickly with the great efforts that SJS puts in uh, to, to making those available quite soon after we, we've shot uh, the discussion. So that's really fantastic. And it's when we started this discussion process that the Criterion Flash sale uh, was amongst us and I just had a thought I said I was sitting there creating all these lists what do I want to order in the Criterion flash sale and I decided what if I just put it to SJS and say what would you recommend I pick up in the flash sale and so essentially what you see here in all these boxes are is uh, flash sale order uh, with majority recommendations from SGS. In fact, mostly all of them. Maybe there'll be a few here and there that I added myself. And I will share with you uh, what that one is. And this one here is just a bonus because it arrived. So I thought I would just show it. Um, but it's also part of the SGS recommend series. And um, the idea also was to have these films on hand. So when SGS randomly picks two, randomly picks two, uh, I have those on my shelf ready to go. So I hope you're excited for this one. And one last shout out. This uh, is all courtesy of Boutique uh, Home Video, who is my trusted uh, supplier for getting Criterion titles, Kino titles, um, other boutique titles uh, released in the US, uh, sourced in the UK, because of course in the UK you can't directly order uh, for a flash sale or a kino sale like the one that's going on. So Boutique Home Video is my trusted source. And so all of you who are in the UK and are looking to participate in some of these sales, uh, definitely check out their website and, and contact them uh, for details if you have a very specific order of titles you're looking at. So I will link the website uh, below. And as you'll see, all my previous hauls, especially with Criterion Kino, they're all with Boutique Home Video, so they're my trusted source. Uh, not sponsored, just a very happy customer. So let's get started, because this might take a little while, uh, because I'm also opening boxes, because I was so excited to have this arrive that I couldn't even wait to unbox and then show separately. I was like, let's just do it live. So the first one, which is not a Criterion title, but uh, SJS recommended, and he wasn't even sure if there is a Blu-ray release. And I happened to find that there was, I believe it's Olive Films that have put this out. And Olive is, I think now, uh, wound down as a business, but you can still find some of their titles uh, around and uh, at good prices. So this is Sealed. It's a Frank Borzegi movie and it's I've Always Loved You. 
So this looks like a very interesting film and um, you know a channel who I watch quite regularly and who I enjoy. Um, Roger Kirby uh, is a big Frank Borzaghi fan. He once did a series running through multiple Frank Borzaghi films so definitely check out that that playlist if you're interested in Borzaghi films and I'll, I'll link that below as well and um, you know Roger is currently not making videos but well wishes to Roger and uh, good health to Roger and hope to see you back here on YouTube very soon because we miss your videos and we and they're just spectacular so check out Roger's channel if you haven't uh, seen his stuff already okay now let's get into it one is open because it arrived earlier uh, and so I had already opened it it was almost a week ago so we'll get to that last uh, because that was the most recent of them and let's get to the original essentially so original plus that new arrival has some of the ones that are part of the original order so I'm going to just open this up uh, boutique home video always make sure everything is packaged perfectly because um, need someone who recognizes what this means to all us collectors and the condition we would like our stuff in especially when it's coming overseas and so let's get started so lots and lots of packaging as you can see there we go, look at that. All this excellent, excellent packaging to make sure all titles are in great condition. I think this is quite a pile of titles and I hope I don't drop them. You see them? So we're going to go through each of these. I hope it's not too noisy uh, in the mic. I apologize if it is. So let's go. Let's start with spine number 778. It is uh, starring Marcello Mastriani and Sophia Loren, 1977 film, and it is a special day. So, and it's directed by Ettore Scola. I've never seen this film, uh, but I know it's well regarded. Definitely interested in this film um, and looking forward to watching it. Next one, Spine 926. And this is Manila in the Claws of Light. Very haunting cover. And I believe this is a film from the Philippines because in, it's in uh, Tagalog with English subtitles. I've heard, uh, you know, many channels also recommend the uh, this film as well. So there's that one. And most recently, I have been attending a Japanese golden era uh, film season at the Garden Cinema in, in London. So... If you're ever in London or if you live in London, look up the Garden Cinema uh, because they're doing incredible things for, you know, cinephiles showing films of all kind. And um, I had the privilege of seeing, well, re-watching on the big screen, uh, Sancho the Bailiff and also seeing for the first time Ugetsu. And then... Uh, SGS and I had one of our sessions, uh, we discussed uh, the life of Uharu. So this is going to be my fourth Kenji Mizuguchi film, Spine 949, a story from Chikamatsu. And for me, I feel like Mizuguchi makes films for the soul. Uh, they connect and resonate with me deeply and this is known as one of his major films along with the other three I mentioned so I'm very much looking forward uh, to watching that. The next one has uh, two films in there and uh, once again Roger Kirby did an excellent 
two excellent videos discussing each of the films. SJS has numerous times brought these films up, uh, even in his most recent videos, I think when he was discussing films from the 70s, if I recall correctly. Uh, yes, so, and uh, that's Spine, it's more recent, Spine 1172, and it's India's song and Baxter, or Baxter. Uh, very intriguing cover, very mysterious, and I've heard that these are not always uh, easy films, uh, but uh, very much looking to go on that ride. The next one is also very well regarded. I've heard uh, multiple channels praise this one. It's Spine 133. I didn't realize it's uh, such an earlier Spine number. It's from 1988 and it is The Vanishing. Another fantastic cover. And here it is. So there's that one. Next, another very well-regarded film in the history of cinema, and it's in Armenian, Azerbaijani, and Georgian, spine number 918, and it is The Color of Pomegranates. I believe even Martin Scorsese has constantly complimented this film. Uh, especially for its use of color and uh, image. Um, so this is very much looking forward to this one. And I recognize I'm repeating myself very much looking forward. So maybe I'll state for the record every single one I'm very much looking forward to. Uh, and uh, so I don't keep repeating myself. Uh, spine number 830 from a well-regarded master. I'm also a fan of Shakespeare, Shakespeare adaptations, and also creative works that interpret Shakespeare in, in, in certain ways. And um, one film that comes to mind, but I can't, for some reason, I've lost the name. Uh, and it's, uh, yes, Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead. So if you've ever seen that, from these side characters from Hamlet, a kind of retelling of a story of Hamlet from, from their perspective. Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead. Definitely check out that film. It's a great film. And in that same tradition from 1966, I think I already said it's 8.30, it's Orson Welles chimes at midnight. And here it's like the Falstaff character from all the Shakespeare plays, and it's kind of like an amalgamation from what I understand, and it's also well regarded as a masterpiece. So there we go. And we've got more and more coming. So we have, uh, again, uh, Japanese season. So I've had, I've been watching, I've had the opportunity to watch a lot of Kurosawa as well. I got to rewatch Rashomon in the cinemas, I got to rewatch uh, Seven Samurai uh, in the cinema, I got to watch Ikiru for the first time, and on my own I've been going through some of uh, Kurosawa's filmography, some of his earlier works that is available on the uh, Eclipse series from Criterion, and so this is meant to continue the Kurosawa journey plus the Shakespeare tie-in adaptation of Macbeth, and this is spine number 190. And it's Throne of Blood. Look at that cover. And it's always a treat to see Toshiro Mifune or Mifune Toshiro in any film. What an extravagant actor with so much range. Um, so very excited for that. This one is of personal interest to me as well because the name included in the title and SJS will know what that that is about and that name also has some tie-in in his life so that's that's also interesting um, described by SJS as absolutely visually stunning um, Game of Thrones before there was Game of Thrones I think at some point he mentioned that it's like Game of Thrones like as well it's a Czech film it's spine number 661 from 1967 and it's Marketa Lazarova. Um, 
then uh, if you've uh, never watched the uh, films, 10 films that remade me uh, challenge that uh, happened what uh, six, eight months ago, like, um, and uh, some of the responses and even my response, this filmmaker was quintessential in remaking me with his uh, with his films, but um, more uh, uh, most especially uh, uh, Andre um, Andre Rublev. So sorry for that brain fart. I'm a little under the weather, even though I seem energetic because I'm very excited to be doing this. Uh, but uh, Andre Rublev, and so to continue on the. Andre Tarkovsky journey. It's spine number 1084 and in a nice digipack boxing it's mirror. Very intriguing with these kind of mirror imaging here. So that's going to be very interesting to watch. So there um moving on i'm gonna try to separate as much as the ones i added um the next one i believe this is alan resney uh who's done uh, last year at marion bad which is quite popular i haven't seen um and this is supposed to be a follow-up to that movie spine number 824 and it's Muriel or the time of return again scratch on face very interesting cover very intriguing cover so we can already gather it's going to be something to do with identity but it says reflection on the nature of time and memory I mean stuff I always find very fascinating uh, such explorations and then I am before I finish this one I'm going to go over to this other box that was already open uh, as there are some other ones that SGS recommended in here and then there are ones that I added so I want to get through all his recommendations first and then share which ones I also happened to add myself so it's nice So the next one, uh, I haven't watched any Cassavetes and this SGS for SGS is his favorite Cassavetes film. He said, I'm very excited to watch some, some Cassavetes. I'm very much interested in the set as well. And it's Spine 721 and it's Love Streams starring John Cassavetes himself, but more importantly, Gina Rollins who's an icon and shamefully I haven't seen her in anything so I need to correct that and I'm going to correct that the next one is Spine 1002 I've heard many channels also uh, speak highly of this film uh, I've even heard it mentioned in Criterion Closet people picking out saying it's a great film and that is Betty Blue And then a couple of films from the same filmmaker whose some of his films I've also picked up from Arrow uh, who has currently has a film in cinemas that I unfortunately have not had the chance to go check out. It was between seeing Wim Vendor's Perfect Days and this one so I went with Perfect Days but I very much would have liked to have seen this one in the cinemas too and now that I'm not feeling well I don't think it's going to happen. It might go out of the cinemas before I get a chance in the film's called Monster, the newest film that's in the cinemas, at least here in the UK, but from Spine 554, it's Hirozaku, Hirokazu Koreda's Still Walking, which many people uh, have very positive things to say about this film in, in the film tube community. And another film of Koreda's, Spine 1089 and it's Afterlife. So it'll be fun to go through Koreda's 
filmography and um yeah when when they come up in terms of the picks of the podcast next one uh is an adaptation of highsmith's the talented mr ripley this is a french adaptation the i believe it's called the american friend is wim vendor's adaptation which i haven't seen yet which i do have um, so hopefully I'll correct those gaps, but this is René Clement film, Spine 637, starring Ellen Delon, who I absolutely loved, uh, in Le Samurai, uh, I've enjoyed him in The Leopard, uh, I haven't seen too many other films, or I can't think of any other films of his that I've watched, but I'd like to watch more of his films, as he's such an icon, and this one is Purple Moon. And then uh, a favorite Hollywood filmmaker uh, for me, especially, I find his films so fascinating, so interesting, no matter what I watch, whether it's In a Lonely Place, if it's The Lusty Men, uh, most recently on the Criterion Channel, they had Born to be Bad, uh, Johnny Guitar, every one of his films, I feel... Is, there are such interesting portraits of like damaged and struggling people, really emotionally raw, really something you can connect with, somewhere where you can find catharsis or even solace. It's They're just wonderful films. And I know, I don't know in detail, but I do know the, the man had troubles of his own. Um, and it's Spine 507. Very excited to see this. Bigger than life. Look at that with the shadows of the covers. I mean, very poetic cover. Okay, and uh, again, I won't show my mine yet, the ones I added to it, but I'm gonna show now what's at the bottom here. So bear with me as I try to detach the top from the bottom. And I apologize for the long video, but I hope you enjoy this long haul. There we go. So that's empty as you can see. We're done with that. We got this one, so now we're gonna open this up. Once again, look at that. Always packaged exceptionally. My boutique home video. Thanks for them preparing so much. Look at that. Bubble wrap the whole thing. So everything's well protected. Empty now. This is going to be very exciting indeed. Best open this carefully. So this, as many of you probably already have. A little bit late to getting it, but in terms of the two box sets that I really, really wanted, not that Criterion doesn't have so many box sets that I want, but the two, if I had to pick two that I really, really wanted, and that's arrived in absolute perfect condition, is the Essential Fellini. So this is magnificent. I know it's a bit awkward shaped. So I'll have to see where I actually um, put it on my shelf or how I present it. If you have any ideas, let me know. How do you uh, display your Fellini set? Um, very exciting. I have only seen uh, La Strada and that's it. So, so many to go through here. 
Um, as you can all see, variety lights, the white chic, um, Il Vitelloni, La Strada, Il Bidone, Knights of Cabiria, La Dolce Vita, Eight and a Half, Juliet of Spirits, Fellini's Satyricon, Roma, Amacord, and The Ship Sails On, and Intervista, which all of you probably already know which films are on there. This has been out for a while. And um, it's not complete Fellini, it's essential Fellini, as many have commented, but uh, I'll start with the essential. Okay, and finally, what did I add on top of it? So there was one title, uh, we wanted to discuss the films of uh, Li Chang Dong. Um, there's another hall that I haven't shared that SGS had actually recommended uh, titles from different boutique label labels and I got a bunch of them. I'll see if I have the opportunity to show those or not. But the Li Chang Dong um, Secret Sunshine is what I ordered. Unfortunately, somehow during the flash sale it had sold out. So I had to pick a replacement film, and I absolutely uh, loved The Taste of Cherry. Coker trilogy I have, but haven't watched yet. But most recently in the cinemas, I saw this intriguing uh, little art piece documentary where uh, uh, I think it's Victor Aris, you pronounce it, and Kira Stami sent these like video letters back and forth at the BFI. Really uh, interesting, uh, funny, and even introspective piece of work but this one I saw on the Criterion channel I absolutely just connected with it blew me away I loved it and it should definitely should be discussed way more spine number 519 close up and I've worked in Afghanistan obviously this is Iran but they are neighboring countries so some things look very similar uh in in terms of uh vegetation, even the streets, and, and all that. So it definitely transported me to that world and I could feel like I could really resonate uh, with it. Uh, so definitely close up, fantastic. Uh, the next one, it's been a long time since I've seen it. My wife hasn't seen it and I just felt, and when I saw it, I saw it some two, three years ago, just around, around this time, as in close to the Eid holidays when I was working in the in Dubai and uh, so I thought it would be a good time to revisit and introduce my wife to it Spine 374 who doesn't know this film Bicycle Thieves and then uh, another film Roger has reviewed most recently I watched um, um, the most recently I watched, how come that film is not coming uh, to my mind? Uh, it's an adaptation of the story, uh, No Beast So Fierce. Uh, I think it's something, Straight Time, Straight Time, uh, available on uh, Warner Archives. It stars Dustin Hoffman. I thought his performance was fantastic, reminded me why Dustin Hoffman is such an interesting actor, made me curious to see his performance in this one, and Swine 182, Straw Dogs. Apparently a very controversial film. Rogers, again, Rogers done a great video discussing this film, so check that out. Again, in the theme of continuing my discovery of Kurosawa films, seen seven samurai but these two are also well-known samurai epics very early in the criterion collection spine numbers 52 and 53 yojimbo and sanjuro i mean i love this box it's such a beautiful box so and then um i've seen some late truffo especially uh, the Bride Wore Black and the four films that were released by Kino. Once again, films Roger has discussed as well. Uh, and so I wanted to watch uh, more Truffaut. And this is the known Truffaut classic starting the Antoine Donnell series. I believe it's Antoine Donnell. Early, early spy number, number five. The 400 Blows. Um, 
I really enjoyed in that four film set from uh, that's available through Kino, that Truffaut set, how he deals with children, how he shoots children and the performance he gets out of children. So this I'm sure is, is going to be, um, well, it's known to be amazing, but uh, so uh, there's a lot to enjoy there. This one, I know it has a 4K. It's a fantastic film. I can't believe my wife still hasn't seen it. I really want her to see it. There is a 4K release that Kino has put out, but I understand that they changed the aspect ratio, which uh, put me off a bit to get that version. Um, if it was like on the waterfront, like the Criterion on the waterfront, where they had like three aspect ratios and you could choose because it was released in three different aspect ratios for the cinemas, that would be different. But I would like to watch it in the original aspect ratio, even though it's not maybe the best, best presentation available. But spine number 541. The Night of the Hunter. And I don't know anyone who doesn't love this film. So this is a well-loved and regarded. So, phew, 30 minutes. Uh, I can catch my breath now. Uh, I hope that was interesting to you and fun. I hope I didn't, because of me, I hope I didn't bore you in any way. But uh, most importantly, thank you very much SJS for doing that. That's quite an exercise. I sent you, what should I pick up in the flash sale? I want, I don't know if I sent you a number of titles or you sent all your favorites and I just looked at them and I said, done, let's let's get them and then uh, and then some and then I added a few um so thank you very much so for the finally encouraging me to get the Fellini set plus the other picks and um look forward to our next chat not this Saturday but the following Saturday um and that's where we're going to be discussing something that's a little bit different uh from Paris with love and then um we are also going to be discussing Three Iron. So definitely check that out if you're interested. Check out uh, the series if you're you're interested. It's very, it's a lot of good fun. And um, I'll see if I can start doing some videos again. Uh, but thank you for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any comments on the pickups, please uh, provide below me any thoughts. Uh, I love to, to hear it. I love to, to discuss. So that's why we're all here so once again thank you for stopping by and hope to see you here next time i hope to see myself here next time with another video all right take care everybody bye bye